Hi guys, it's Dave here, we're back in the shed. Um, back to the story of the broken shredder. The gear that was damaged, I had a search on the internet. I could find a company in America that will make them to order, any size and shape you like, for about three quid a piece. Only problem is, the minimum order of 5,000. I ain't paying that kind of money for a gear, for a shredder that costs 70 quid. So. Uh, what I've done is I've manufactured a replacement gear to replace that section of this gear. I'll, uh, I'll talk you through it very briefly. I'll just reposition the camera so you can see better what I've done. So what I've done is I've made a replacement gear section, or I'm making a replacement gear section, to replace just this part of the gear. So the first thing I'd have to do was cut a piece of stock material to make that out of uh, which the only thing I got was a piece a piece about five inches long of 50 by 20 mil thick aluminium bar so I cut a square chunk off the end and then cut the corners off it so that I could then put that in the lathe now to mount it in the lathe what I did was bore through the center and tap it to 8 mil so I could then screw an 8 mil diameter bar into the center with a lock nut on it then I could clamp the 8 mil bar in the jaws of the lathe to spin this down to the correct diameter and a nice smooth finish. After that I bored the inner bore to clear this section on the gear because that will fit in there eventually. Um, then I machined out this side of it, because that will slide over. Eventually when I cut this old gear away, that will sit over like that. So then to use the teeth on the original gear as a guide for cutting the new teeth, what I wanted to do was somehow clamp those together in a way that they couldn't move like so. So out of a piece of scrap aluminium tube, I machined up a little collar, that fits in there, that fits on there, and that locates it quite nicely. Now I need a clamp through the centre. That hole is only 5mm, so I've got a 4mm screw. That would go in there, but that doesn't reach to clamp on this. So I've got a stepped washer, that will go over there. The screw actually goes through from that side and then I'm just using a, an M8 nut as a spacer and then finally the M4 nut on the end and I just grip that nut and tighten the screw up. That then holds the two nicely tightly together in line so I could then use the hacksaw following the original teeth on the original gear as a guide to cut the basic teeth into the new gear. The only problem with that is I end up with square teeth. If you look at the end profile, the gap eating is slightly different on a couple of them but that's not a problem because they've got to be dressed down to shape yet. But the, the profile of the teeth is square. What they actually need to be is shaped like that. And if you can see, the, each tooth tapers to almost a point. The purpose of that is so that when they mesh and rotate against each other, they just slide over each other nice and smooth. Uh, if you lift them square, it would just jam up. So the next step will be to hand file the teeth. I've already started on some of them to get them somewhere near the right shape so that they will mesh smoothly with the drive pinion of the motor. So I'll disassemble that again. 
and then we can pop that in the vise over here just find the ones that have been done and then with a three cornered file I can then just gently shake the edges of the teeth so that hopefully when it's all done they will mesh smoothly and neatly with the pinion. This is going to take a little while so I'll come back to you when I've done. Just about got them done, just doing a final tweak with a little needle file. And that's about it. I can't test it for mesh until I've cut the teeth off this gear, the, the outer body off this gear. What I can do is just try it against that gear. I've got one that's a bit big. Another one that's a little bit square. Most of them are pretty good. There's a couple that need a little tweak. But overall I'm quite happy with that. So the next part of the job will be done back in the workshop on the lathe to machine the outer off that. I'll just tweak those last few teeth on there to make them perfect. And then we can get back to sorting out the rest of it. The one thing we need to address is why it actually failed in the first place. I don't think it's just general wear and tear. I think it's the uh, shredding mechanism has got clogged up with dust and bits of paper from its couple of years use and so it's gradually got tighter and tighter until it's put too much load on that and the metal gear has just stripped the teeth off the plastic gear. So I think we need to take the shredding mechanism apart which appears to be fairly straightforward it looks like if we just gently ease those two gears off like so and then it would appear if we unscrew these four screws one Actually, before I do take the last two of those off, I think I need to take this bar off, which is the trigger that senses when paper is in and engages the switch to switch the motor on. So I think we just need to slip that off there first. On. And there's the bar. I think we can just gently prise the second part of that lever. This is the one that detects CDs or credit cards in the appropriate slot. Let's pop that out. And now, hopefully. And I take these two last screws out. I think the motor assembly and gearbox end will come off the shredder assembly. That seems to be what's happening. There we go. 
So that's the motor assembly removed. Pop. That screw off there. You can remove that switch and that's the electrics all off it. It uh, looks like the two halves of the casing are held together by these screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can take those four screws out as well first. Oh, we've got a longer screw there. So those are the four screws. Uh, I'm going to try leaving that disc on. Oh, I am going to have to take that disc off if it'll unscrew. It's a left hand thread. There's that disc and it's spring and retaining screw. There's the other end casing. Put that at that end so we know where it came from. Top half off. Pop that there. Now we can see the shredding rollers. And yeah, I think it is. It's just a collection of dust and debris from all the work it's done over the few years we've had it that has collected in between the teeth and the rollers and it's just got tighter and tighter until it's overloaded that gear and stripped it so we can give this a clean up and um, put it all back together should be pretty straightforward okay so I've had all that apart cleaned all the debris out of it there was quite a lot of ground up paper stuck in between the various parts which was making it very tight to turn these shredder sections are quite close together and quite tight so they do have quite a bit of friction to turn in as it is so we can reassemble this part we've still got a bit of debris in there look I suppose you could say that's how paper beats scissors. Maybe not. Anyway. Take that the right way around. Go back on there. Get 
right screw to drive it. This end plate can go on. Then plates like this, it's never a bad idea to tighten the screws up diagonally. If they're in a circle, you do diametrically opposite. And go in a star pattern. This helps to avoid jamming things up by being on the skew. And that's the screw out of the switch, so we don't need that on. We do need to put that plate on the end of that shaft. So there's me trying to tighten it up as a normal right hand thread and all I'm doing is unscrewing it. There we go. I'm not quite sure what that is supposed to do because that is allowed to free turn on there and there's light spring pressure holding it against the end of the shaft. But we'll see. So out. Let's clean that rubbish out to the end of that. back in there that will be the stop position so when you put a sheet of paper in there or a CD or credit card or whatever in here for shredding that lifts that makes the switch which starts the motor drives all the gear in and then when the paper has gone through or the CD has gone through that will continue to turn that will be like so and the switch is engaged then that will turn like so and when it gets to there it allows the switch to open and switch the motor off very simple right that's about as far as we can go for now until I've finished machine in this gear up so what I've got to do is pop that in the lathe and spin this outer ring gear off it and then that new gear can go over there like so to replace these teeth and what I intend to do is drill through probably three positions 
and drill and tap into there probably about three mil and just put some little screws in with some Loctite to make sure they don't come undone and then that should be repaired and we can put it all back together and away we go I hope you found this interesting and we'll see you for part three Thank you.